I will lay down my idols and thrones I have made and all that has taken my heart. Lord, I will bow to you to no other God but you. Hallelujah. Father, what is it about finances that you can't bring me into? And God is saying, I, I, I own the cattle on a thousand hill. The silver is mine and the gold is mine. Are we together now? First Chronicles 29, 11 and 12. I'm tempted to just show you that scripture. Someone must repent tonight. As a way of stepping into prophecy. We are going to repent from carnality and the love, the mundane pursuit for money, just for self-aggrandizement. God's program is greater than that. Let's read together. Thine, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory uh -huh, and the majesty for all that is in heaven and in the earth is thine. Thine is the kingdom, O Lord, and thou art exalted above it all. Read verse 12 convincingly. Both riches and honor come of thee, and thou reignest over all. Uh -huh. And in thy hand is power and might, my God. And in thy hand is and to give strength to all. God has the power to make men great. I know that many people believe you don't need God to prosper. It depends on what you define as prosperity. You don't need God to transact value and to be rewarded. You are right. But the fulfillment and the joy that comes with prospering God's way, only God can make that happen. Paul can plant, Apollos can water, but only God brings increase. The kind of increase that takes away sorrow, the kind of increase where you can still roll and worship God as a billionaire, as a millionaire, and people will look at you and say, what is wrong with you? You are already blessed. Why are you still an usher in church, whereas you have estates? You will tell them, the reason why I came to church was not to get money. I came because I loved him. My prospering is just a sign effect but it will never affect my passion for God I've seen people who change in the presence of so little so little so little a little tea and bread on your table and God cannot get your attention again how can I sweep the house of God as a CEO and heaven watches you and say the intention is not even for you to be a CEO the intention is to be exalted above the nations of the earth but the corruption in your heart hallelujah there are people today if God should trust with 10 million 100 million 50 million even 1 million you will not greet anybody again including a man of God yes come I hear you are looking for money for something. I'm going to donate 10 million, but kneel down first. <laughs> and while that is happening, heaven is watching you. So this was all about, this was all what the prayer was about. So your fasting was just about this. So all your Bible study was just about this. You reduce God to become Naira and Kobo? Is this all about it? No. Are we learning? For someone, God is speaking to you. I'm staying to press here because I, by the privilege of God's grace, let me tell you, I've worked with God a bit. And I know how to partner with prophecy. When God speaks, don't just rejoice over what he has said. Start aligning yourself. And to align yourself in order of priority is not just talking about money. That purifying of your heart. Let me tell you the truth. God is still looking for men he can trust with resources. But many believers have disappointed him because of the pride that emanates in the presence of plenty. My heart is yours. 
my mind is yours my will is yours you're the king of my life you're the king of my life can God give you 10 naira today and say so that 10 naira back and you say your majesty it may be painful but it belongs to you and God will say it was only a test I don't need your money you have qualified for the next level now 50 naira can come and you say Lord even if it is 100 naira that comes it still belongs to you there is a part of this wealth thing that is not about business it's not about buying and selling it's a covenant transaction please listen to me I know what I'm saying there is a part of this finance thing that is mysteriously spiritual. It has nothing to do with buying and selling. I'm not a dummy. I understand the economic system of the world. You believe me on that with all humility. But there is a side to this thing, bar that is not selling a car for profit or building a mall. <clears throat> that one, that business is done in the spirit. Is the same thing that happens between the kings of this world and Satan too. They can start by transacting, but there are certain levels of wealth. Believe me, it's not buying and selling that brings you there. No, it's spirit transactions that ends with a covenant. We are going to open you to this world. We are going to open you to the wealth of the cosmos. What are we going to get in return? And you say in return, I will fund the program of Satan. Stamp it, stamp it with blood and doors open. Satan took Jesus into an exceeding high mountain and showed him the glories of the world and said, all this I will give to you. He didn't say if you buy a container of palm oil, red oil, and sell it across to Ghana or to another nation. He said, if you will bow to me. If Jesus quietly bowed to Satan, you will not know. You will just see that dominion has returned to him. Do you know there are many other people who have been called like that to those chambers in the spirit? You want to become famous? You want to become this and this spirit to say the condition is bow to me, sell your soul. And they say, what nonsense is my soul? And they make the mistake of Esau. What is, what is my soul? What is my relationship with Jesus? No, I need money. That's all I want. What do I need to do? Kill your child with speed. Kill your wife with speed. Kill your husband. Who else should I kill? Because this thing I must get it. You would think I'm joking. I would not stand on this stage and be talking to the globe and joke and I'm joking. It's true. The same way when God wants to trust you with wealth, genuine wealth, true riches, I tell you it's beyond business. It may flow through the channel of business. But God is going to call you to the chambers of the spirit. He will tell you, I have a program and I'm looking for a treasurer. And your own, listen. Yours is going, to, your own will say, Lord, I want you to walk upon my heart so that you can trust me. That with the wealth of the kingdom as it comes, it will be beyond pride, building an empire. No, this is beyond just having houses and making a name and becoming CEO of XYZ. And God will say, can I trust you that souls will be won? Can I trust you that homes will be mended? Can I trust you that children will eat? Can I trust you that you will lift up my name? And with the frailty of your heart, this is what we call covenant wealth. Covenant wealth is not wealth that happens by you just tithing and giving. No. The covenant there is to understand the purpose that you are bound that I will never forget why. The why is what makes it covenant, not the practice within it. Understanding the purpose is what makes it covenant. So God can tell you, I want to trust you with the wealth of nations that I will make you as an individual to become like a nation. And you say, Lord, what is the condition? 
the condition is that your heart will remain mine loving me the condition is that every time I make a demand, you will say yes, sir. The condition is that while the world looks at you in admiration, you will point them back to me and you will say yes, Lord. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your ways. Oh, yes, Lord. We will obey. Yes to your will, Lord. Yes to your way. Oh, yes, Lord, we will obey. And once you are done with that business in the spirit, now you can come out, you can buy and sell, you can do whatever you do, and a mysterious force that will be clear before men that this one bar is not just transaction, there is an invisible force. That force is God's part of the covenant insisting that you rise does not matter what the economy is let me tell you the truth believers please hear me the agriculturist is not the one who makes the earth to produce the agriculturist only masters planting once he drops that seed and covers it the remaining air eh, there are parts he cannot explain there is a hand within the earth It is God's covenant with the earth that partners with that business of agriculture that as far as the earth remains, seed time and harvest. So when you come to the farm and say, I have a bumper harvest, 30 trucks of rice, 30 trucks of maize, uh -uh. it was not all about buying and selling. You partnered with the spirit realm. 